I'm Shetta Singh and you're watching Go Island on Shaw TV. In a galaxy far, far away, scientists have discovered something new and it might change the way we think about our universe. Is that right? Is that how you would explain this whole thing with Andromeda? Well, we discovered something quite interesting. I'm not really sure how much this will change <laughs> our view of the universe, but yeah. it, it certainly is an interesting uh, finding. What we found is that the satellites of uh, the Andromeda galaxy, which are all of them galaxies on their own right, mm -hmm. they're moving around Andromeda, not uh, in the random patterns that we had anticipated, but actually in a very ordered fashion, you know, like, like planets actually around the sun. So they seem to go around Andromeda and rotate around it. And that is not the business of galaxies. That's what planets do. That's what stars do in a galaxy. But that's not what galaxies do around other galaxies. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's quite, uh, it's quite remarkable. And Andromeda, for people out there who don't know what it is, it is a galaxy on its own? Andromeda is a big galaxy. It's a giant galaxy. It's actually bigger than our own galaxy, the Milky Way. And it's one of the few galaxies that you can see in a very, very dark night and a very, very good sight mm -hmm. with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. So I'm told, because I'm from the Southern Hemisphere, <laughs> <laughs> so, and I've never been able to see it with, with my naked eyes. Yeah. Even if, and I've been to good places. In the south, though, we do have other galaxies, like the Magellanic Clouds, mm -hmm. you can see with the naked eye. Mm -hmm. uh, but Andromeda is a giant galaxy like our own, and therefore what we learn about Andromeda, we can almost immediately translate uh, into knowledge of our own galaxy. And could, so we can apply this thing about, you know, moving around Andromeda in terms of the Milky Way and how we see that. That is our hope that we can, you know, whatever we learn about Andromeda will serve uh, to further our understanding of how the Milky Way formed. How well do we know the Milky Way? Actually, it's hard to know the Milky Way very well because we are in the middle of it and we're surrounded by clouds of dust and gas that absorbs most of the starlight. So we can only see very well in very few directions. Mm -hmm. One of those directions is actually the direction of Andromeda. So mm -hmm. it's much easier to look at Andromeda from the, out, you know, from, from, from the outside than to look at our own galaxy. Hmm. And you've, this was discovered just randomly. It wasn't your intent to... It wasn't this. our intent to look at, to, to find this particular pattern. Mm -hmm. This was a serendipitous uh, discovery, something we were not expecting. And me in particular, I'm very hard to convince. <laughs> if not, <laughs> ask my students. And yeah. I'm very hard to convince. And it took me a while to you know, you know, get around to the fact that this is not just a chance. This mm -hmm. really um, is a robust feature of the way uh, the satellites of Andromeda are moving. Now, what does this mean in terms of the way they're moving? Does that mean it, the way it was formed or what it might mean for planets? Or We don't know exactly because we haven't you know, come up with a good understanding of it. But what we do know is that the same mechanism that makes planets go around the sun, for mm -hmm. example, or make stars go around the center of the galaxy, like our own uh, sun goes around the center of the Milky Way, that mechanism cannot work. So whatever it is, it's a new mechanism. Yeah. My gut feeling is that we're seeing something that was imprinted already very early on. When the Andromeda formed, it formed with something like this. It was formed mm -hmm. with a plane of material that then gave rise to these uh, satellites that are now orbiting it around it. Mm -hmm. uh, how that, that, did that happen? That is <laughs> unclear and is not, you know, it does not come easily in our models. Mm -hmm. uh, hence, we need to revise them. Uh, but uh, and that's where uh, we're actually in the process of doing that now. Um, still a lot more to discover, I'm guessing, out there. The universe is big, <laughs> so the more we look, so much more. the more we are surprised, mm -hmm. uh, the more we find. And how far away is Andromeda? Oh, it's about what we call 700 kiloparsecs, or like, I believe, 2.1 million light years, if, oh, wow. my, if my mental math is, <laughs> is, uh, is, is correct. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, well, there you go, Some, something new, and it's right here in your backyard, University of Victoria. <laughs> there you go, all right, thank you. Thank you. That's good. Our first story, we're heading up to Couch and Bay, where there's a proposed road that will go from Maple Bay Peninsula Road to San Sam Point Park, but the proposal is causing some uproar in the community. Jen Moranitz has our story. 
With a new year underway, many of us have had some New Year's resolutions and we want to get in shape, including our reporter James Green, who recently put his post-holiday fitness to the test and advanced cardio class for athletes. And as you see in this next piece, well, James has his work cut out for him. And I forgot to mention off the top of the show, but we are inside the Bob Wright building here at UVic. And this is the observatory. Um, this is the new one, which opened up a couple of years ago, but uh, it's um, the big telescope huge and you can actually come on down here it's open to the public Wednesdays 8 to 10 p.m. and you can come on down here look at the stars look at the telescope and discover something new um, we're gonna take a quick break right now when we come back learning to make your superfood super easy It's an ancient South American grain used by the Incas, and now quinoa is considered a superfood. It's high in protein, fiber, magnesium, and iron. And Dan Hayes, the London chef, and Karen Elgersma are going to show us how to make it high in flavor. And just to give you a bit more information about quinoa, it is a source of calcium and it's great for vegans and people who are lactose intolerant. It's also considered gluten free, so it's um, easy to digest. A quick break now when we come back finding fossils in Nanaimo. Welcome back to Go Island. We are here at UVic at the Bob Wright Center and um, we were talking about Andromeda and some of the findings um, recently and it's come right out of the University of Victoria and of course if you want to learn more about what's out there and you want to check out the observatory it is open Wednesdays from 8 to 10. It's free. You might have to pay for parking unless you're taking transit. Our next story, who knows what lies beneath our feet often hidden in crevices or in this case underwater. Recently, there was a find of a lifetime at the base of Mount Benson in Nanaimo. That's all the time we have on today's show. Thanks to Dr. Navarro for um, giving us a little more insight into what it's all about um, with the new findings. And for more information, you can check out the website. Uh, don't forget, you can check us out on Twitter. We are Go Island South, Facebook Go Island South, and emails with your comments, suggestions, location ideas, story ideas. We are go underscore island south at shaw.ca. And we will see you next time. <laughs>